What is up all my Jeep and friends? Today's video is about a topic that is all over the forums, many, many places on the internet. Let's remove some track bars. Now, I'm shooting this intro after I've already removed the track bars, so I can tell you firsthand, it's cool, do it. One of the best mods you'll do to your YJ that you can do possibly, I mean, it's just awesome. Uh, no control issues, drives better, rides better, a lot more flex if you're out wheeling, it's a two thumbs up. So, you know, I can sit here and give you the spiel about how great it is, or I can just get this video rolling and you guys see how it's done. I haven't got footage of me driving it, so you guys can see how stable and how much, you know, how well it drives. So, ah, enough cabin, let's get on with it. Somebody got some loud pipes. Made me a little ramp right here to flex it out as much as I possibly could using car ramp, 4 by 4s then a 2 by 4 here, and anything higher than that I can get it on the ramp because the back tire would actually spin. Yeah, I know, no lockers. And before you guys start talking crap, whoa, he got lights but no lockers. I get the lights for free, I sponsor thing. As soon as somebody sponsors me some lockers, I'll have those too. Or I'll eventually buy them, whichever. Anyway, back to the point. Got that thing. 13 and a half inches from the surface of here. Surface right of the tire sets to the uh, driveway, 13 and a half inches. And look at my shocks. No, I got no hardcore flex going on here at all. Um, those S10 leaves, they're stiff. They are stiff. They definitely limit flex. So there will be a, a true good lift on the horizon. Again, there's the S10 G pack leaf. No whole lot of flex thing going on there. Got my rear tire stuffed. Let's see what we got going on back here for bump stop action. Looks like I've got about an inch before it sits on the diff. I'm talking about the uh, GM packs and the flex and check this out. Jeep leaf here. Look at that arch right here. I mean, we're talking, I could get my pinky up inside there just about. That GM pack, GM leaf, not flexing at all hardly. But that Jeep is curved over top of right here being the pivot point. Yeah, the GM leaves do limit flex without a doubt. So, like I said a moment ago, there will be a true lift put on this thing before too long but i've got a couple other projects i want to do first before i venture into that let me come over here now we have driver's side rear we're going to look at okay cool. uh, shocks here okay here we go some was blaring at the camera that's the top of the shock tube right there. So that shock is in full extension right now. So in other words, it is extended as far as it can. Sorry, people had a burp build. The shock is extended as far as it can and bottomed out. So therefore, this tire right here, look real close. You see the spin marks here where I was trying to pull up on the uh, pull up on the ramp as much as I could. Cannot see the viewfinder so bright out here. See me rocking the Jeep. So that's our flex situation at the moment. But what we're going to do today is that bar again having bright light viewfinder issues right there. That's your track bar. That's the topic today. We're taking that bad boy off. The discussion on the internet is if you remove the track bar, do you get more flex? If you, uh, does it ride better? Does it ride worse? Is it dangerous because it limit because it's supposed to hold the front end in place? Well, I can tell you from past experience with other four wheel drives that I've had, I've owned, and been around, blah, 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 that on a leaf spring vehicle, be it a Jeep, be it a Bedazzled International Scout, 
I know three quarter ton Chevy I used to have, blah 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 blah. Leaf springs do not need track bars. Why? Because the shackles here, if you've got these properly torqued, at yeah, approximately 45 pounds or so, these are uh, torqued pro uh, properly. The limit direction this way, therefore keeping your axle centered within inside the body. Now, TJ, LJ, JKs, uh, the front ends of uh, XJs, you guys have coil springs in the front. Okay, coil springs require track bars. Okay, lee springs do not. Again, listen very close to the, to the Jeep, uh, Jeeper newbies out there. If you're watching this video and you have a XJ Cherokee or you have a TJ uh, Wrangler, uh, LJ Wrangler, JK, JKUs, listen, you need the track bar. YJs, CJs do not. Well, CJs don't come out with it. So, that's what we're going to find out today. Okay, now let's talk about the whole thing of how track bars come about. Back in the days of the CJs, CJ5, CJ7s, blah, 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 blah. Of course, those were leaf spring Jeeps. But there was a rollover situation with them to where, you know, people were going around curves, the Jeep would just roll over, or they'd have to make a sudden change, the intersection change, the Jeep would roll over. Hello, it's not a vet, it's a Jeep, okay? So, CJ's line ended, the YJ's pick up, the government's throwing a big tizzy fit, saying you must make these uh, vehicles uh, much more safe by doing something, do something, just make them safe, so they don't roll over so easy. Well. Come the YJs was the wider wider wheelbase and the track bars, just to make the government happy. Well, it's like this: Did the track bars limit body roll? Yeah, debatable. Do they locate the center, the axle center of the body? Well, of course they do. That's their, it's their main potential job. But what they also do, they bind the suspension. Meaning, let's go back to the front end. I'll try to talk you through that. Okay. Now let's take a moment to discuss the front end geometry. Right there, that line right there, that is your track bar. Line comes straight across here, that's your sway bar. Right here is your leaf springs, and here's your shackles. Okay, as far as uh, discussion at the moment, the only thing we're going to talk about is that track bar, leaf springs, and these shackles, okay? That track bar here connects to the frame up here okay now whenever you guys suspension travel that's going up and down like this the leaf springs here as well as taking that up and down it flexes here on the shackles okay now we got these bushes here that, that absorb you don't have metal to metal contact which is all for whenever so whenever your suspension is compression on the springs here the bushings are absorbing the harshness okay what they are not designed to do is flex this way the bushings themselves inside the shackles inside the uh, shackles here and the springs and the mounts up here they are not designed to go laterally okay keep that in mind that track bar here uh think back to geometry back in school we've got our arc a radius up here is connected to the frame down here is uh, the end of the track bar if you keep my thumb still and i pivot here like it's a center if you remember back in uh, school, whenever you did, whenever you worked with a compass, you had one end stationary, the other end of the arc, you created an arc. Well, that arc pulls and pushes right here. As that track bar right there rotates up and down, that arc pivoting up here, that arc is pushing your axle this way. Now, remember what I said? These bushings right here are not designed to go laterally like that they're supposed to rotate and flex i mean rotate as in pivot here pivot here that's all they're designed to do so when you got this track bar here whenever it runs at that arc it's pushing your axle this way binding on your uh, shackles and stuff here that is why they ride so rough so okay 
My suspension is about two inches over stock using the GM packs from the junkyard lift. So when I did that, I pushed the body up off the axle. Of course, that's where you get lift. I know I'm making it sound elementary, but I'm trying to be, for the people who really don't understand suspension geometry, you know, I'm trying to be as descriptive as I can. For the people who know this stuff, bear with me. When I picked the body up off the axle from the lift, that dropped my track bar downward, pushing my axle that way. Because the arc was originally centered here, when it drops down, it binded the whole suspension and pushed my axles this way or pulled my body that way, which I wouldn't even look at it. So, even in natural state driving down the road now where I've got the lift, it's already binding my suspension. Now, I've got it under hard flex right now, articulation. It's even flexing the pull of my axle more so that way, binding against my shackles. Okay, we're going to remove the track bar. Here's your steering box, pitman arm, sway bar, sway bar bushing, and see where the, so the wrench is. That nuts a 21 millimeter. Back in behind it is a T55 Torx. Then you follow the track bar to the other end, right there. So you gotta get those two bolts out. Then that track bar should come out. Hopefully, what you're gonna what you're gonna hope for is that the bolt isn't seized inside the sleeve because what you got is a bushing pressed into this bar and rubber bushing we got a metal can here rubber bushing then it's a metal uh, sleeve inside all that what happens sometimes is that bolt seizes up to that sleeve on the inside and it is an absolute freaking nightmare to get them out of there so let's just hope that's not what's going to happen here okay let's get this baby out of there I forgot to mention that the passenger side bolt that goes into the differential, 18 millimeter. There's the front track bar out. I look at the front end. Look right there. All that space. It even looks better already. Uh, mentioned a moment ago that the uh, 18 millimeter for this end over here, also the 21 millimeter nut on the back side of it. So, well, there's the front track bar. Let's see if that back one cooperates. The front one's pretty easy. And now we're under the back. Shock is over right there. There's one in the track bar. All the way across. Two. There's the other end. Gotta get those bolts out. T55 this end. Torx. 21 millimeter here. Both ends. And let's just hope that the bolt is not seized up inside the bushing. Because I've seen that happen way too many times. So, get her done. Right there, that top one. You know, I mentioned a moment ago, hoping that it, the bolt was not seized inside the sleeve of the bushing. Guess what? The T55 Torx, I'm about twisted the head out of it, trying to even make it budge. I've got the bolt out of the other end. But I'm kind of screwed on that one right there. And that just not gonna come out at all until that bolt comes out of there. It's easy enough to squeeze that bracket right there. The rear diff bracket that's right there. That I can't even flex it. Flex it me and take it out of the take the track bar out of the other end. It's just like there. So my option is get my air tool with the cutoff bits cut the head off that bolt or pull out the plasma cutter cut the head off that bolt that's my only choices I have that head of the bolt's got to come off so decisions decisions do I want to do the plasma or do I want to uh, do that cut off saw air cut off saw okay I like to go with the uh, cut off saw right there and you can see my cuts, I've already went, hor I've went horizontal on two different planes. Taking off the bottom side of the head there and the top side. And it should go, I should have went just a little bit higher on that. But now I'm going to change my cut and go vertical. Taking off that wing there and taking off that wing there. And that will kind of give you a better access to the top one to shave it going this way. So I'm going to take off, go up and down. Or vertical it should, it should be said. 
take off that wing and that wing right there and see if that'll help me get the top part of that bolt head off. So I just wanted to pause for a moment to show you guys how I was cutting that. And what you want to do is, you know, in this case I was throwing my sparks over to the drum, the rotation of the head, because it's not going to hurt anything there. You just may have to clean the dust off. But now whenever I do my, my vertical cuts, I'm going to throw the sparks down because the fuel lines are right there. Now, will it hurt? Probably not. But do I feel like being barbecued? Obviously not. So I'm going to throw the sparks down. And if you can't handle the heat of the sparks, my kid, get you a, uh, if you got a welder jack, it'd be awesome. I've got one. I've got a welder, leather welder's jack, but I'm just not smart enough to use it. So I'm just going to lay in here and cuss and scream and, well, not really, but, you know, take the heat. But if you, if you throw the sparks just right, you won't catch many of them. So wear out protection and it wouldn't hurt to wear ear protection either because of the high pitched sound of that saw but definitely definitely wear eye protection so all right that's one pause for a minute show you guys how it's cutting it okay you can see my cuts i've already done i did the uh the vertical cuts the bottom horizontal cut and what you're seeing is the wings are gone now i got a little bit of the top part of the bolt left right there right along the very edge of my fingertip all I got to do is slice upward upward and it takes off the rest of the head of the bolt right there that doesn't get me out of the water just yet I still got to shave that bolt down to its flush at least or even recessed that bracket then on the other side I still got the bolt protruding all the way through the other side of the bracket I got to cut it off flush then I can fight it and you know work its way out of there I may have to spread the bracket just a little bit to allow the bolts to slide through I pulled a control arm up at uh, Thunderbird, you guys see in the background occasionally. The lower control arms do just like this right here. You talk about a daggone nightmare bringing them things out. Jeez. But I got to slice it right there just a little bit. takes off the rest of the head of that bolt. Then we'll take my cutter head. Cutter head run like this. Go against it and just kind of come up and down this right here and shave the head back up inside the bracket. Because that's kind of oval shaped right there. Then once I get it recessed a bit, then I go on the other side, cut, flush cut the uh, bolt off with the bracket on the other side. And do the same thing, take my cutter head and just kind of feather it, recess it back. And at that point, I might have to get me something to wedge in between the bracket here and widen the bracket on the rear, rear diff to loosen it up to allow it to come out. So at this point right here, I'm pretty well home free. But sometimes it's just one of those things you have to do when you're wrenching on old, old cars. So it is what it is. Well, looks like I cut it anyway, but didn't really mean to. But you know what? I really don't care because I had no intention to put it back anyway. But if I do, I'll just weld that right there back up and brace it, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you can tell where I took the cutter head and just kind of shaved it, recessed it back inside that groove right there. And on the other side. cut it off flush with the bracket. So now at this point I've got my pry bars. I'm supposed to spread that bracket a little wider on the rear diff right here. Let's see if I can get it wide enough to slide those uh, bolts out of there. Because I can grab hold of well somewhat. I can move it a little bit now. But I gotta spread that bracket enough that uh, bolts where they're sticking out to come out of the bracket now so can't do that and hold the camera. So I'm gonna start prying and a grunting. I won, but it was a fight, I promise you that. Yeah, I'll show you. Right here, on the inside of this, right here, you've got a metal can that houses the bushing. Then you've got this uh, metal tube right here that the bolt runs through. And that allows this allows all this you know act as a cushion inside there okay when oftentimes what happens when the bolt goes through there and it's an old vehicle special one like this old rig right here where it's been put through water and god knows what else that bolt rusts to the sleeve right here and it will not move i've seen it happen on leaf springs more than anything i had a 67 mustang coupe that i, put, I had to change out the real leaves and bushings and stuff on and i did i had i mean Lord have mercy the cutting I had to do to get that thing because that bolt was seized up inside there 
and it was it was hard to get to begin with so yeah that thing was that mustang the old mustang was a pain real bad but it was a fight so we ended up having to do is after i shaved the heads of the bolts i took a screwdriver wedged it up through here and drove it out with a whole lot of fussing and we'll just say i didn't have a camera so therefore i don't have to do any sound edits from my beep 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 beep, beep. So it would sound like Morse code. But anyway, I won. So now, oh, I'm going to show you one other thing I had to do. This thing's lifted high enough that I had to, I used my jack here, but the Jeep was lifted high enough that it didn't do me any good, so I put them up on those four forge right here where I made that makeshift ramp to flex it out. Why did I do that? Picking the body up off the rear differential takes your uh, takes that uh, track bar and elongates it like this which takes and pulls it well because under normal state when it's sitting the uh, suspension sitting flat track bar sitting like this is compressing it and pushing it up into the bushing sockets into the frame socket so whenever I pick the body up rear end drops track bar does this number so it allowed me to flex that track bar just a little bit more to help worm it you know to worm that sucker out of there like I said, it was a fight. But due to the limitations of my shots, I really didn't expect to gain much more flex, to be honest with you. But, check this out. Right here is where I got determined. I, I can't shake the body now. It's like before, there, I mean, I really have to fight it now. So I gained a little bit more flex out of it. So how much more did I gain? I don't know, but what we can do, I'm gonna jack this up just a little bit more and see what I can pull off here, okay? Back off of it, pick it up a little more. Well, I put the ramp on top of the four before there and I pulled up it, no problem. Didn't bark the tire, no tire squeal back here, didn't spin, I mean, it pulled right up, no problem. Before, when the track bars were on it, I couldn't do it. I mean, it would not pull up there because I was taking all the weight off the back end here. And it was actually the front axle because of no articulation up front. Obviously, the track bar was limiting it that it would actually pick the front tire up at this level because I tried that first. And I couldn't pull it off simply because it would pick the whole front tire up over here and or the back tire was leaving the ground there. Either way, I wasn't getting up it. So, no track bars, I did gain flex. Um, what I didn't have before too, now that I notice, the bump stops here. All right, let me go on this side, a better angle. Right there, pretty close. We got a little bit of spread on this one, which means my axle is actually flexing down now. So, hmm. Honestly, like I said a moment ago, because of the limitations of the shocks, I didn't expect to gain any flex. I did. I gained some. Uh, also, no, some of you guys are going to point out, I know, I know, I know, the sway bar is limiting a lot of my flex up front. I know that. That is a future video for doing uh, sway bar disconnects. So this whole series, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call it a series because this is the track, you know, track bar test. Remove the track bar. Do you gain flex? How does it drive? Blah 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 blah. Is it safe? So now it's gonna be road time to uh, see how his road manners are. Does it sway all over the road? Body roll, all that stuff that people are freaking out, scared over. So now I'll give you guys an accurate judgment test and stuff. You can see the flex of the sway bar. See how this is canted downward. This one here is kind of straight flat over here on this side. That side's kind of flat. This one's kind of canted downward. So the sway bar's got a hard twist in it right now. If I were to disconnect the sway bar, I would get probably even more flex out of it. Yes, are you uh, hardcore jeepers that do this stuff all the time? Yes, I know that. But again, it's just one of those, uh, I'm doing it in steps and series to show do this, you get this. Do this, you get that. You know, step, 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 baby steps. Okay, I got plenty of stretch on this back end. Again, I bet you I got my limitation on my shocks. Yeah, because I can touch the top of the tube right there. Let's see. Can I pick the body up? Yep, just a little bit. 
So it's kind of hard twisting it right now. How hard of a cram this in? We got even more tuck. Because now I'm actually covering over the knobs right there on the flares. We got this lean out here. So I'm happy. So now I'm going to be heading out to a friend's mine a little bit. We're all gathering around a bonfire, chilling for the night. Good, good time just hanging out. Ain't nothing like a summer, summer evening in a bonfire. You know what's up. So, gonna head out there. So also, those roads are kind of curvies and stuff. So I'm gonna be able, to, you know, get a good road manners test out of that. Uh, highway near me has a very bad. It's transitions like you've got the bridge here, the road surface here. The transition from the road surface to the bridge is a quick up rise. Every time I GPS it, it feels like I'm playing Dukes of Hazzard or something. I'll already be going airborne. So I'll hit that. No, that'll give me my how soft of a ride it is. Because I bet you removing those uh, track bars. The track bars being missing now, being gone. My shackles can move up and down now instead of being forced side to side. Like a track bars, you no know, running that arc like I told you guys earlier, pushing the shackles side to side. So so far so good. Sweet. Forgot to look at one more thing when we was checking it out after getting a little bit more flex out of it. Let's check this bump stop and see where it's setting. Oh. Crap, don't let it get dark on me out here. I can't see it. Uh, it's definitely closer. But I can't tell how much if I can get my hand up in the side there to see. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's on the bump stops now. I can't really tell the fucking... When it's dark, I can't see, see exactly, but... It feels to me like it's sitting on the bump stop. So it doesn't need more flexes on this uh, this one side. Now, we mentioned about the GM leap earlier. Focus. Alright, here we go. We mentioned about the GM leap earlier. Right here is the GM leap where I did the uh, junkyard lift. Here's the Jeep Leaf. You see daylight right there. The Jeep Leaf's arcing over top of the GM Leaf. So the GM Leaf definitely is a limitation for flex. But I've got a couple more projects, a couple more, how I say, pricier projects that I want to take care of first. Now looking at actually getting a legit lift kit for this thing and lifting it right instead of doing the junkyard pack. Now, as I explained earlier in the video that this is for the YJs only to remove the track bar. Here's why. This is the front end of a 2006 model Jeep TJ. Coil springs. Right here is your track bar on this one. It comes over top the differential pumpkin here. It comes across and joins to the front end over here. Which locates the front suspension laterally. The TJs and any of your coil spring Jeeps do not have a method of locating laterally other than the track bar. Uh, so, you don't need to hear, there it is. So, plus I'll, to, I'll link a video down below of where we changed out track bar on a, uh, another LJ. But that's the difference. You got your coil springs here, coil springs there, and you got your track bar running across here. So this video of removing track bars is not for you if you have those springs. If you have those springs, do not do this modification.
But if you notice to the right, as I come down 40 here, there's a big green sign, and then the small green sign. And listen to, you can hear the camera make like that little popping sound. Then I go the length of the bridge, and then you hear it pop again, because you, you pay attention to the G, you can see it hop up, then drop down. There you go everyone, I have shown you, you do not need track bars on a YJ. On forums, on Facebook, many different places on the internet, it's all about, can I remove my track bars and my Jeep still be safe? If I remove my track bars, will the Jeep, you know, be uncontrollable? You know, I understand those are total valid safety concerns. I pulled my track bars, I have driven this thing actually for a few weeks now. Better ride, better control, handles great, no craziness all over the road. And to beat it off, my shocks are done for the shot. So therefore, I don't have the advantage of having brand new shock absorbers to help control any type of uh, body roll, bouncing, any kind of control issues or anything like that. So, you know, I still got my sway bar hooked up, so that helps with the body roll, which I got very little of. It's a win-win situation, it's awesome. Actually, the suspension is much more forgiving, especially if you're going down the highway and you're rolling 65, 70, and you hit some of those uh, abrupt changes in the asphalt, the suspension is actually a lot more forgiving now. Hence, it doesn't like run your spine up the back of your head, you know? Much better. You got a great comment you wanna say? You took your track bars off and it rides so much better? Tell me about it down below, down in the comment section. Leave me a comment about how good it drives. I'm not gonna be a singer, I promise you, okay? I won't do that to you. Did you hit that? Thumbs up. Oh, cool. Thank you. You rock. Appreciate it. Now, what else we got to do? That's right. Make sure you subscribe because when you subscribe, I release a video, you will get notified, and you will see another educational, comical, or who knows what I do next video. Got to subscribe to see them. Go check out www.fixjeeps.com. That's where this video gets attached to that website, and that website contains a bunch of other videos, but it also contains downloadable little charts, lots of information where you can diagnose issues with your YJ. Go check out the site, www.fixjeeps.com. But most of all, everyone, I really appreciate you guys checking out my channel. All you, everybody that subscribed, awesome. I'm pushing 8,000 subscribers right now. That is just like, totally cool. I can't wait to hit that 10,000 marker. So everyone out there, Skeeter, everyone out there who has supported me, give me those thumbs up, and everyone who's subscribed, tons, 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 I appreciate it. So everyone, I want you out there in YouTube land to have a great, great day. Peace out. Later, y'all.